turn. Do the quick turnaround. I want to do that more often. Kick. Punch. Turn around. Okay. Let's check my recording real quick. The way I'm playing through this, I, I really didn't feel like breaking up the uh, episodes into sign-off and sign-on segments. I figured I'd just play through it, flap my gums, and uh, break it up into uh, break it up by editing later on. No, oh, I thwacked the bug. Then the kid got me. Harry Mason. Strong enough to take on bugs. Kids are too much. Yeah, yeah, fucker. Oh, ugh, he didn't switch targets. Yeah, shotgun. So, yeah, the hyper blaster does about shotgun damage <clears throat> at mid range. Mid range shotgun. The hyper blaster damage is consistent. Regardless of distance. The shotgun, however, it, it has a damage bonus. Woohoo! Miss me, fucker! It has a damage bonus at close range. Yeah. <laughs> Chomp. Telephone. What's going on with that telephone? Alright, so. Can't use it. Why, Harry? Why? Is it not plugged in? You just. Or just. No, because you said so. Harry said bedtime. Ah! Phone's like, you can't tell me what to do. Can't use me. Psh, bitch! I use you. Cheryl! Symbolism? Or just scary movie creepy moment? You decide! While I also decide. Oh, there's a fucked up glitch later on in the game. Like, oh, shit. Hi. Can't see me. Oh, they still know. These kids are too bright for me. <laughs> this is because, like, just. Oh, God, Harry. Harry. I'm blaming that one on you. It sure is. See ya. Ah, uh, bug. No. Oh. Don't fucking cut me. In my butt. The reloading system is odd in this game. Like whenever you put your gun down, it like automatically reloads. So it kind of defeats the purpose of going into the menu to reload. Or even having a reload animation. Oh! <laughs> God, I love that. Right, going up here to plug some holes with my ball. Uh, you know, just the kind of thing Harry does. So, like, about all that symbolism earlier, if if I can help it, I steer clear of the uh, of addressing. Not not addressing, but like, steer clear of blaming. Certain symbolism, it, not not blaming, but uh, assuming it's geared towards the uh, sexual molestation of a child. Yeah, because 
Like, while that's horrifically disturbing and, and like, by that, by that nature, effective in a psychological, um, sort of hell horror vein, and within the context of, of this sort of horror, it's the kind of horror that's based on, you know, mental trauma and anguish and all that. This is like one of the only sorts of environments in which that applies, you know, like in which that makes sense to be used as an element. Because so often it does get used as like an easy way to horrify. Like here it's entirely within the context of the nature of horror that this is. And that is not, like, the singular, uh, traumatic event around all of which this is based. You know, it, it would, it could be implied, but then that's, that even that is, like, it's kind of too mean from a script, you know, a horror script perspective. It's like, damn, can't this fucking girl catch a break? Hey... You, you see later on more of the, the like look that kid is just tenacious you see later on you know kind of the actual reason for the season it's not spelled out very explicitly you know what's going on which again it kind of <laughs> leads into the uh, the stuck up thing of Silent Hill being thinking Man, thinking man's Resident Evil they don't need the plot like directly doled out to you you know, you, you've got to you've got to see some sort of hints of events to know what's going on. But some of the characters' motivations and exactly the nature of what they're doing is left a little bit up in the air. Just a little bit. Let you count, you know, the movie, which spells it out harder. But like I said about the movie, you know, good rule of thumb to not lean directly on that. Shotgun shells. I'm gonna use the hyper blaster to get out of here a little more quickly. Shut your stupid kid mouth. Shut your stupid bug mouth. This hyper blaster's out of control. It's Christ. Oh, I'm, oh, the bug bit me, and you know, I'm hurting a little bit. And I keep pushing triangle. Speaking triangle, what was I doing? Oh shit. Was there much reason to even come down in this Yes, there is. Never mind. Got it. Uh, some of the things that happen to Alessa aren't explicitly spelled out, and it's in fact a little bit cryptic in one of the cases. But it's... The thing that is cryptic is, like, the darkest thing. And I'll, I'll point that out when uh, when we get there. And... I kind of blame some of the, the cryptic nature of some of... of uh, some of the explanations for events and actions and motivations, I kind of blame a little bit of that on perhaps trying too hard to be cryptic and spooky as far as the script goes, you know, the, the, the dialogue between the characters. It's ill-defining. Yeah, let me check this. Nothing useful in the locker. Okay, let's appreciate this for a second. He, he, changed, he checks the locker. He says nothing useful in it. He didn't open it. Like, he could hand wave it and say, Oh, it's just a video gamey thing. He knows there's nothing in the locker, because, you know, he's... He's he's implied to be checking it, looking in there, seeing what's what's going on. Nothing useful in there. But no, he says it with such certainty. He's like, nothing useful in the locker. Nope, nothing there. So, you gotta imagine that he looked in them. You know, at least through the slot. And then he, he checked this one, and it's... Is the kitty okay? 
Oh, didn't even open himself. Come on in. Observe my bloody box. Oh. Oh, 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 no. Oh, I might be overthinking that, but... Oh, geez, a traumatic moment in the locker room. Yeah, I'm thinking, thinking something a little Carrie style. Could, could be. So, hey, Harry! How about that nothing useful in the locker, you fucking guy? That looks useful to me. You know, the key, at least. I'm not sure about the body. A body is slumped over. He leans down to the body. I'm looking for a little girl. Short, black hair. Just turned seven. Ah, but okay. If some of the... <laughs> Some of the cryptic nature of the eh, fuck it, hyper blaster or whatever. Stop biting my foot! What a terrible crunch sound. By terrible, I mean you know effective sound design, but really sounds like bones crunching, and I don't want to think about that in terms of your foot. Ah. If if the uh, the cryptic nature of some of the um, some of the exposition of past events, you know, some of the exposition of what's going on, if it's cryptic, it, I, I like to believe it's not you know cryptic for simply being clumsy, but cryptic because they don't want to you know spell it out like, hey, player, Wesker's bad. Spoilers? I don't want to, you know, beat you over the head with... Yeah. Dahlia Gillespie might be Umbrella. I didn't get that before? I didn't get that, that health drink. Why did I pick up that health drink? It's right there. Someone's alcohol in the school. And there's also a lot of ambiguity as to, you know, the very nature of this other world, I guess. Like, the t I'm sure it gets explained in, uh, in in later games a little bit more. But uh, I've beaten three a number of times. One and three were the ones that that uh, you know, actually own. Until you know, I, I had to rebuy this one on PSN because I don't know what the hell happened to my first disc. It probably went to the other world. Yeah, it happens sometimes. But like, I, I don't... Thump? What about Thump? Oh, Thump. Oh, shit! Ugh, I meant to check out the library as well, because I, I wanted to, to point out... Okay, in the Light World library, there are a bunch more of those little uh, shadow babies. The, the cute ones. So, uh, keep that in mind. I'll, I'll bring that up again later. But the very nature of the other world, it's, it's unclear. Like, while I'm sure... Yeah, so here, here's this, uh... This is the Monster Lurks. Leonard Rhine. Apparently wrote the... No, wait. Shit. I'm sorry, I got the books mixed up. This is a, uh, a clue for the... The boss. But also... It's in Alessa's mind, you know, it, it's materialized here in Silent Hill, uh, other world version, as a product of, of Alessa's mind. You know, in the Hell world, you start to see, you know, that's, that's one thing I can, you know, spit out with some certainty, is that, you know, in other world, you see the more uh, fleshed out, concrete realizations of... Alessa's mental traumas and 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 memories, and then uh, something like this, you know, something that's it's what would this have been, you know? This I think would have been something she had, but it's in the school. Hmm. 
Well, then again, stuff does materialize elsewhere. Like the cards that were scattered all over the table, you see those cards scattered all over her room. And I think that was on a fateful night. So, you know, the visions that... The things that she saw around in her environment on the, you know, a certain night are the ones that um, you see popping up because of the, you know, the extreme anguish, how cemented these little, these small visual cues are in her memory. Like, this is, this is saying this. Yeah, no. Doesn't happen to just everybody. You gotta have some fucking crazy psychic power. Psychic slash magic. But I say, you know, psychic more often because it's psychological, you know, it's... It's stuff related to her mind. Whether the manifestation of such things are pure-ass, you know, sorcery magic. Wizard did it. Or not. Did I not? I didn't go downstairs. Fuck. Okay. Whether the manifestation of this stuff is by magic or not, uh, the the traumas are psychological. Uh, you know, to say something psychic doesn't necessarily mean you know someone has ESP or or it's telekinetic or psychokinetic. Or pyrokinetic, you know, whatever. Yeah, psychic. Yeah, pretty sure the uh, the etymology. Hey, wait a minute. Oh shit! 